know, I was sitting here thinking today, money is the root of all power. And we're going to go through a historical standpoint to prove this thesis. And why don't most people have power? Don't have any money. And they have been ill informed with these false narratives that, you know, you should be a good person. You should care about other people, but these are the things that are put before money. And I've, I've said this before, but money ranks right up there with oxygen and importance. And one of the things that people don't seem to understand is the importance of having money. You know, it's like, I want to have money so I can ball. I want to have money so I can do what I want to do. But money is the root of all power. Money, like take our military. One of the reasons that America has so much power is we have the biggest, the best, and the most expensive military on the planet. We spend money for our power. And I don't think people really understand that concept. I don't think that people understand that situation because if you want to have power, you need money. Let's go way back when to the kings and queens. The kings and queens were born into power because the royal family had the land, they had the money, and if you will look at it, there is a close correspondence between money and power. Video I did earlier, I was talking about who is Congress taking care of? The American people got like 350 billion. Corporations got trillions. This is fact. This is something you can Google. You could like, oh, the repo, the Fed, it's doing double monkey backflips all over to the stock market. And if you have to look at it, the corporations, those 8,000 corporations that represent the American stock markets have the power because they have the money. And how do you go from someone without power to someone with power? You need to figure out a way to get yourself some money. It's just that simple. I mean, currently we have protesting and people are starting to win, but the thing is, is it the protesting or is it the rioting? Because the rioting is creating economic damage, which is causing people to lose money, causing people to lose power. So this is another way to go about it. You can make money or you could create a situation where you can lose money to gain power. But it's better to get money and gain your power than to destroy someone else's property to shift an agenda because you really don't get power. Like all the rioters, they're tearing stuff up, you know, they're damaging these businesses. There was no direct transfer of power to the rioters. It was a temporary like, okay, hey, 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 y'all, y'all keep tearing my stuff up. I'm going to give in to some of your demands to keep y'all from tearing my stuff up. That's not really a shift in power. A big shift in power is on this global reset. Like America could for the first time in history face the tamp down in power because I want you to look at these numbers. Our GDP, which is money, GDP, gross domestic product, is what we make. It's the combination of what we put out. The higher our GDP, the more wealthy that we are. The more wealthy that we are, the more power that we have. That's how it goes. And with this pandemic and the additional spending that it has created, we may be in a situation at the end of the year where our GDP is less than our national debt, which is the first time that this has ever happened. And I'm going to be really interested to see that because 
that would be a reduction in power. You, you as a person, you've got to get some money because like literally we have 120 million people who make less than $50,000 a year. As a collective group for purchasing power and buying stuff from Walmart and Target and Amazon, that represents a lot of buying power, but these, this, this buying block doesn't recognize that if they redirected their money in other channels, then they can get things done. They can get things changed. Like we can have a better economic policy like other countries, because in Canada, I think they're getting 2000 bucks a month, 2000 Canadian, whatever that is. And that could be happening here. But once again, going back to my other video, the corporations have the money the corporations have the power and the American people are left out in the cold because they don't have no money. So how does someone go from no money to getting some money and getting some power? It is a linear path. You got to increase your income. You increase your income, you increase your options across the board. You can increase where you live. You can increase what you eat. You can increase your health care. There are so many things that making more money will deliberately impact. And how does the average person go from making no money to some money? I'm going to share the story of Cleaver. When I was doing 30 days to 2500, Cleaver was on one of the live webinars and he's like, hey, I have no car. I have no place to live. I'm living with folks. I have no money. How does someone like me go ahead and get a little power, get a little money? And I said, start a service business. Because here's the thing, for those of you who are in a situation where you have no money, no power, you got to do what you got to do until you can do better. And starting a service business will instantly give you money like literally there are some service businesses you could start in the morning and at the end of the day you have money it is the fastest way for someone who is disempowered has no money to get themselves some money and then you get through this process because the first thing is you get the money and then the second thing is you get used to having money this is one of the things that is really really crazy with the human condition there are people who are not used to having money or power, and once they get it, they will do everything in their power to get rid of it, to mess it up, because they're uncomfortable with it because they have lived so long without money. It's strange to have money in the bank. It, it feels good, it feels nice, but it's a little creepy. So this is one of the things that you have to do. First, you have to get the money, then you have to get used to having the money. Then you have to direct, direct the money to buy your power. And there are many ways you can do this because the last uh, last Tuesday was the, I think it was the ninth, was the elections here in Georgia. And for a voting person, that's the most powerful elections you can participate in because you elect people who directly impact how you live at the local level. And this is why most people don't understand that they should vote for their local politicians. But getting the power, it should become a mandate in your life. Acquiring power, acquiring money should become a mandate. It shouldn't be something that's nice to do. Well, you know, eh, it's cool. No, no, no. It should be a prime directive because your lack of power is being reflected in this pandemic. You're, like I said, Congress. Congress is taking care of the corporations. But you, America, you're being left out in the cold. Understand how the relationship works. The corporations have the money, the corporations have the power. That's how it goes. So if you want to get some power, you got to get yourself some money. So what we're going to be doing this Thursday is talking about retraining and redirecting yourself during this live webinar, the link's below, you get a discount. And we're going to talk about many of the things that you should do to
to start getting yourself some power to set your family up for a power dynamic. Because without any money, it's gonna be really, really hard to get any power. Really, really hard. So that's all I got for you guys. Check it out, there's another video right here.